Men of distinction are not men who were faced with less battles in life or less problems in life. But men of distinction are men who took the word of God and held on to it and understood the mystery behind names. That was powerful. I will say that again. Men of distinction in this life are not men who were faced with lesser problems or lesser challenges, but men of distinction are men who took the word of God and held on to it. And on top of that, understood the mystery of names. Are we still together? So life is about what? Names. To an extent that when the disciples of Jesus came to Jesus and said, Lord, demons obey us. Demons listen to us. Jesus says to them, do not be happy because demons listen to you, but rather be happy because your names are written in heaven. Meaning in heaven, there is a place where God writes names. I know we love to confuse the book of life and heaven. When Jesus said, be excited that your names, this is too deep, man. Your names are written in heaven. He was not talking to the disciples as if your names are written in the book of life. So Jesus was saying to them, there is a place in heaven where your names are written. And that on its own should bring more joy and that on its own should make you excited. Names are so powerful that until you understand the truth behind names, you will live an ordinary life. You see, the disciples of Jesus were disciples, men like us. But I want you to understand that the moment you enter heaven, the Bible speaks about the 12 gates in heaven in the book of Revelation, that there will be 12 gates, and the 12 gates uh, will actually have the names of the sons of Jacob. How many of you remember the sons of Israel? The 12 gates in heaven. Listen, you are in heaven. This is where you are thinking, I should be talking to angels, and I should be meeting God, I should be encountering God, but rather in heaven, you are encountering gates with people's names. Let's go to the book of Revelation. We'll do a scripture reading a little bit today. The book of Revelation chapter 21, verses 9. And in a count of three, we all read one, two, three. Then came one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues and spoke to me, saying... Come, I will show you the bride. Come on now. The wife of the Lamb. Verses 10. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem uh -huh. coming down out of heaven from God. Uh -huh. Verse 11. Having the glory of God, its radiance like a most rare jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. Verses 12. This is where we are taking off. Uh huh. It had a great high wall. Uh huh. So this new Jerusalem had what? A great great high wall. Uh huh. With what? With 12 gates. Am I still in church? With what? With 12 gates. That's more like it. Uh huh. And at the gate, 12 angels. And on the gates, the names of the 12 tribes of the sons of Israel were inscribed. What was on the gates? The names of the 12 tribes of the sons. But what are we talking about here? New Jerusalem. Well, if you are here and you don't know what New Jerusalem is, let me quickly break it down to you. When Jesus comes back, as we all know that Jesus is coming back, the Bible speaks about the new heaven. And the new heaven will be established here on earth. In a sense of the new Jerusalem will come down here. And when the new Jerusalem comes, the new Jerusalem had a high wall and with 12 gates. And on those gates, names, and these are not names of angels, hear me in the Holy Ghost. But these are names of men. Continue, let's go. 
and not only the sons of Israel. Let's go. Uh huh. On the east three gates. Uh huh. On the north three gates. Uh huh. On the south three gates. Uh huh. And on the west three gates. And it gives us twelve. Continue. Uh huh. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations. How many foundations? Twelve foundations. Uh huh. And on them were the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Mm, my God. I want you to understand, and this is something that I normally teach only in the school of ministry, by revelation, that when you get to heaven, yes, you are in a place where God resides, a place where there are angels, but you will still come across names of men. That when you stand on a foundation, you will be told that foundation is called John. And John was not an angel, but John was a man. And I want you to understand that this is not uh, in heaven, in the sense of heaven, heaven, but heaven will have came down at that time. Come on now, church. Come on now. So, while you are walking, there is a gate here. And that gate has a name called Judah. Has a name called Dan. And these are the sons of a man called Jacob who happened to be Israel. But remember, hence I said that before God does anything, God will have to work on your name. Some of you, what is stopping God from moving or results in your life, it is your name. That's why if somebody wants to kill you, they don't have to touch you. They just have to call your name. That's why some of you, the reason why things are happening the way they are happening is because your name was called in covens. They did not have to touch you. No, brother. They did not have to touch you. No, sister. They called your name in shrines. That you can be in church, churching all the time. And this hurt me every time I say it. Where I see believers logged, screaming, shouting and praying, but not knowing where the problem is. It hurts me every time. Hear me very well. Once your name is mentioned in an unholy place, that which the person desires will take place in your life. Not because they shook your hand, but they called your name. Imagine your name is not only your name. In a sense of, there are so many people with your name. But when they called your name, it did not go to the other person who shares your name. It came to you. When Jesus stood up, he said, Lazarus, come forth. How many Lazarus died at that time? Many Lazarus died. But he said, Lazarus, come forth. And the one that he wanted came out. There is something about your names that you people, I, I feel I should share, but at the very same time, I, should, I, I feel I should hold back. Because the way you are looking at me, Ah, you are making me feel like I'm in the wrong place. It's because there is something about your name. I told you, I said, your name, pay attention now, is connected to four things. The devil is a liar. Your name is connected to four things. Your name is connected to your identity. Your name is connected to your access. That's your functionality. Your name is connected to your assignment. Your name is connected to your authority. Meaning every time the devil wants to stop you from exercising your authority, he stops your name. He attacks your name. He deals with your name. Every time the enemy wants to mess up your identity, he deals with what? Your name. And that is because there is something about names. Life is about names. You see, when the sons of Sceva... In the book of Acts 19, so Paul casting out devils, they went to a demon-possessed man and said, come out in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. And the demon-possessed man said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. And notice if you may, the demon-possessed man never said, Saul, I know. The demon-possessed man said, Paul, I know. But who are you? What is your 
name. When Jesus in the book of Mark chapter 4 verse 35 crossed to the other side and met a demon possessed man, the first thing that Jesus asked the demon possessed man, he says, what is your name? There is something about names. Some of you, do you know, and I'm going to say this, I know I'm going to get in trouble, that every time you pray and you call upon the name of the Lord, in the spirit, entities wants to know what is his name. God is a faithful God. That won't change. It won't start today. But here's what I want you to understand. You can be on the other side of who you are destined to be because of your name. Let me say that again. You can be on the other side of life not because God did not put something on this side, but what keeps you on the other side, my goodness, is your name. That until you understand that life is about names and you work on your name, you can never fathom that is on the other, that which is on the other side. In the book of, let's go there, Genesis. Genesis chapter 32. And I want us to read verse 28. Then he said, uh -huh. your name shall no longer be, go be called Jacob. But why did the angel say this? Verse 26. And he said, uh -huh. let me go, uh -huh. for the day breaketh. Uh -huh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. So what is it that Jacob is looking for? Okay, let me talk to these people only here. Because I feel you are the ones here. Uh, 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 you are the wrong one. You are pretending. Okay. Maybe this side. Yes. Please be seated. What is it that Jacob is looking for? What is he asking the angel for? He says, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. But I want you to understand something here. This is deep. This is deep. Jacob, right, was a son of Isaac. Meaning he has what I call an automatic blessing in him. And that is because his grandfather is Abraham. When God said to Abraham, come out, God said to Abraham, not only will I bless you, but I will also bless your children and your children's children. You and I today, we call ourselves, or we are called the seed of Abraham. But I want you to understand that this here is a direct seed of Abraham. And that is because this man's name is Jacob. He was a son of Isaac. Isaac was a son of Abraham. He is automatically blessed by lineage. But hear me in the Holy Ghost. Not only was he blessed automatically, good God, when his father was about to die, Isaac, his father blessed him thinking his blessing is So Jacob was a man with a blessing from his father. His father, before he died, his father released a blessing because in those days, a formal blessing was regarded as an inheritance. So if a parent is about to die, a parent will bless his children. And whatever he says, they, those things will come to pass, will be the reality of the children. But now as for Jacob, this guy here had stolen a blessing of somebody, he's blessed. To an extent that when Esau went to the father and said, but father, Jacob already took my blessing. The father said, I have no blessing left for you. So this guy here is not like uh, he was not experiencing blessings in his life. Hear me very well here. But then again, when he had an encounter with the divinity, when he had an encounter, when he had a visitation, he fought with the angel. What was he fighting for? A blessing. And the angel says, I'm about to go. Leave me because the day is about to come. Sun is about to come out. 
And the man said, I'm not leaving you until you bless me. Meaning this wrestling here and this battle here was about a blessing. So from the first place, Jacob was fighting an angel for a blessing. Cool of a hand. And the angel says, no problem, I'm about to bless you. But what is your name? Why would the angel ask, what is your name? If names were not important. Some of you, God wants to do something. Your name is standing at the door like this. Hear me. Listen. Personalize it. If you can personalize what I'm saying, you will hear me. But if you are going to think he's preaching to all of us, you are going to miss the revelation. 100% sure. Online, my sons and daughters, all over the world, they are getting it. I'm just not sure with you. And I pray that you also get it. Why will an angel from God people don't understand that this has nothing to do with law. This has nothing to do with grace because this was before the law. Come on now. So this has nothing to do with the law. Forget saying the law times this. This had nothing to do with the law. It was before the law. And if you are going to define God in his reality, you cannot define God and leave Jacob outside God. Because today we have the children of Israel who are known to be a chosen nation because of who? Jacob. When God appeared to men, he said, I'm the God of Abraham. I'm the God of Isaac. And I'm the God of Jacob. Meaning every time God introduced himself, he will mention this fellow here. But how was this fellow blessed? But we are not seeing him being blessed for the first time where his name had to change. His grandfather's name had to change. When God blessed his grandfather Abraham, he said, I will make your name great. Some people are irrelevant in our time. Not because they don't have something to talk about. But their names makes them irrelevant. I grew up from a family where I never, excuse me, where I never had anything about my grandfather from my father's side. Nobody has ever mentioned the guy. Up to date, nobody talks about the guy. You don't want to be like that in your generation. And if I was to tell you now, by the Spirit of God, and I'm very, very, very honest with you, I don't even know his name. Yet, my father comes from him. I don't know my father's father's name. I don't. Nobody has ever mentioned him. And because nobody has ever mentioned him, nobody even asked. Even myself, I never asked. You can be everywhere in life and live 70, life, 70 years in this life and check out irrelevant. That after you check out, nobody will remember your name. Because the greatest inheritance according to the Bible is when you leave your name, not just inheritance, but leave your name for your children. Your name will become a leverage to your generation. Names are powerful. He says, leave me. You people here who are getting it, are you still here? You here. He says, leave me. He says, no. Why? I'm not leaving you until you bless me. Then the angel knows what a blessing is. The angel knows what a blessing is. Did you hear it? The angel knows if I can work on this, a blessing is no longer a problem. The angel says, what is your name? And the man says, I'm Jacob. The angel says, from today, your name shall not be Jacob anymore, but shall be what? Israel. I want to show you something. You here, you are getting it. I want to show you something. I'm not sure about this one's here and this one's here, but we'll see about it. I want to show you something in the book of Exodus. I want to show you something in the book of Exodus. If you can be kind enough, I'm about to close. So please make sure that when I close, you had what God had to say to you. The book of Exodus, this is powerful. Chapter 3, 
Let's read one, two, three. And Moses said unto God, uh -huh. Who am I that I shall go unto Pharaoh, uh -huh. and that I shall bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Uh -huh. And he said, uh -huh. Certainly I will be with thee. Everybody read. Uh -huh. And this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. Verse 13. And Moses said unto God, Yes. Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, uh -huh. and shall say unto them, The, the God, God of, of your fathers, fathers hath sent, sent me unto you. you. Uh -huh. And they shall say to me, what, what is his, his name? name? Why, wait a minute. We don't have a problem that God has sent you Moses. Oh, my people missed it again. <laughs> Moses is saying to God, when I arrive to the children of Israel, and I tell them that the God of your fathers has sent me, they will ask me this question. What is his name? Meaning they don't have a problem with the God that has sent him. Oh, they want to know what is the name. In the spirit, when you pray, some of you, you don't know this. Hence, I don't teach this thing in the public like this. There are certain dimensions you will never access. Your name will actually be a key. The children of Israel understood something that today very few believers understand because everybody is just doing things. They, you see, people are trapped in religion and they neglect spirituality. We are spiritual beings. We are not religious beings. God is not a Christian. God is a spirit. I'm in the image of God. I'm a spirit. So I say, hey, God is not a Christian. Yes, Jesus himself is not a Christian. Yes. I know I offended you there. Say, ah, Jesus is not a Christian. So what was Jesus? Jesus is a spirit. Yes. The word of God. Child of God. Son of God. Not the only begotten. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. He was the only begotten before he died. After he died, he became the firstborn. So we are all sons. He is the firstborn. So he's not the only son. That's why this prayer of, oh Jesus, the only son of God, he himself is shocked at you. The level of your ignorance. He was the only begotten before he died. But after he died, the Bible says he became the firstborn. So if he's a firstborn, meaning there are others after him. And that's where you and I come in. The Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are what? Sons of God. He came to his own, his own received him not, but as many as received him, to them gave you what? Power to become what? Sons of God. So Jesus is not a Christian. Names. In heaven, it's all about names. <laughs> Who shall I say? Okay, no problem. They want to know his name. Then he asks God, imagine after throwing a rod. So those who don't know what happened here. Remember there was a burning bush, blah, blah, blah. Come Moses. Moses came and then God said, what do you have in your hand? And rod, they threw it and it became a serpent. He said, pick it up by its tail. It became a rod again. That's a miracle. He says, take your hand, put it under your armpit. When he took it out, it had sores. He said, put it back. It was now healed. Moses is still not shocked by that. And then God says, this shall be like a token, as of a token, meaning a sign that I've sent you. Now, go and tell them. Say, but wait a minute. They shall ask me this question. What is his name? Miracles in Israel, ah, sorry, in Egypt at that time was not something to be wowed about. Magicians were there like there is no tomorrow. There were many gods there. In those days, the, the magicians of Pharaoh, 
they will make it rain. Those guys were dangerous. So the, the, the Israelites in Egypt were never going to be moved by that. But they want to know the name before they say yes. Let's hear the name. Life is about names. Let's go. We were never taught, hence it's very difficult for some of you to digest it. But the more you open your spirit, the more you will understand. Verse 14, please. And God said unto Moses. Let's read all of us. One, two, three. And God said unto Moses. Uh-huh. I am that I am. He said what? I am that I am. But what was Moses looking for? The name. This will actually close this debate that has been going around in the body of Christ. Let's read the scripture because scripture does not contradict itself. Rather, it interprets itself. He said, what? But they will ask me, what is his name? And God answered there to Moses. And he said, what? I, I am, am that, that I, I am. am. And he said, what? And he said, uh -huh. thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, uh -huh. I am hath sent me unto you. Watch this now. God himself in verses 15, he seals it. Read it. He says forever. Uh-huh. Go. And God said moreover unto Moses, uh -huh. Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, uh -huh. The Lord God of your fathers, uh -huh. the God of Abraham, uh -huh. the God of Isaac, uh -huh. and the God of Jacob, uh -huh. hath sent me unto you. Uh -huh. This is my name forever. This is my name forever. But what is the name? We read about it now. That says, I am that I am. So God has a name and he says, as for this one, it is not a seasonal name. As for this one, it is not a temporary name. This one is my name forever. Meaning if you call upon God and you say, I am, you have touched other parts of God that any other name cannot touch. For the first time, God was compelled to introduce himself. He had revealed himself. People knew God's attributes, but did not know the name of God. One will build an altar and give the altar a name. Why? That was God's attribute. Testimonies of God. People have testimonies. It's like now, God heals you and say his name is the healer. He's not limited to that. Other ones will be delivered and say his name is the deliverer. Those are attributes. Those are testimonies. But for the first time, God comes and he says, my name is. And he says, forever. Life is about names. Until you sanctify your name. Until you ask God to sanctify your name. There are other things will never happen. And the reason why I'm teaching on this is because your name is connected to your access. What you have access to, your name will say this how far you go. You can access this to this. Names. Do you know how powerful names are in the spirit? That entities move because of names. I don't know if you have ever been there. Some of us, we did not grow up from a, uh, we didn't come from a family where, you know, people believed in God. Some of us were the first ones to believe in God. But we came from families where people who call other names of people who died long time ago. And they would do funny things uh, next to the bed. And we were all forced to say the same thing. There were names that were uh, told uh, every time we are in trouble, if we call this name, something will happen. We don't know the person, we know the name. It's because they had a revelation that you, a believer, you don't have. I told you that the Bible says in the book of Job, show me the house of darkness. Show me where light dwell so that I may know their address. I may know where they live. Meaning there is a place, there is a home address of light. And there is a home address of darkness. And darkness is the opposite of light. 
And I want you to understand that the enemy does not create, but everything he does, he copies what God does, and then he puts his nature into it. Glory be to God. So these people, yes, they are blind spiritually, but they have a revelation. There's something about names. When Elisha was crossing the, ro- the, 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 the river, remember, first time it was Elisha and Elijah. You remember, right, in 2 Kings, right? In 2 Kings chapter 2. Then Elijah took his coat, remember, right? And he hit the water, the water separated, right? And they walked on the dry ground. And now they are on the other side of the river. And Elijah is taken to heaven. Wind and chariots of fire took him. Paligabaro. And right there, Kulabaha, the jacket fell. And Elisha saw the jacket. He tore his own clothes. Picked up the jacket. Put it on. He's walking now. He came across the same river that Elijah had split. And because he saw what Elijah did, he took the jacket. He hit the water. The water did not separate. He looked at the jacket and said, but this is the same jacket. And he hit the water. The water did not respond. And this is what he said for the third time. Where is the God of Elijah? And when he hit the water, the water split. Ah. He himself did not have access to that dimension. But Elijah had access to that dimension. Hear me very well. Oh. What? Okay, let me tell you something. That's why it's important for you to understand the mystery of names. God says to Jeremiah, Jeremiah, he calls him by name. He says, Jeremiah, remember in Isaiah, he said, I am the Lord your God who has called you by your name. Right? So he says to Jeremiah, before you were formed, Jeremiah, in your mother's womb, I knew you. Meaning the access we are talking about is in the spirit. The identity we are talking about is not the physical one. It's in the spirit. The authority we are talking about is in the spirit. That's why your name is a spiritual thing. So the reason why there are people who call names of the dead is because they saw what those people were capable of when they were on earth. That when they begin to call their names, things happen. Never be deceived. Witchcraft is real. Don't think it's not working. It's working. Uh Uh-uh. What are you talking about? When you read the Bible, Moses came like this, threw his rod, and it became snake, and Pharaoh started laughing. And as he was laughing, he said, wait a minute. I will surprise you, my friend. He called his magicians. They came. They threw a lot of rods, sticks. All of them became snakes. And as they became snakes, the Bible says, and Moses' snake, Moses' rod swallowed all of them. So it works, but you'll be the last man standing. They will try, but you will be the last woman standing. It is ignorance to think it doesn't work. What are you talking about? It is actually ignorance for you to think it doesn't work. It works. Witchcraft is real. There are people who are taking all over the world. They have been bewitched. As a man of God, as an apostle who has delivered thousands of people, I've seen it with my own eyes. Where somebody's destiny is locked because somebody bewitched them. I've seen people's names taken into glasses and locked, thrown in the river. What are you talking about? And their lives never made sense until they were delivered. Are we together? Are we together? Say with me, life is about names. They received the name of the Lord. They knew that this is the name of the God of Egypt, of Israel. When he got in Egypt, he said, ladies and gentlemen, I've been sent by God. He says, I've been sent by God. Because Moses always had a rod with him 
I can imagine him lifting up his rod like this. I've been sent by God. They said, wait a minute. What is his name? Just give us his name. And our spirits will respond to the name. Not because he's God. We want the name. I told you when I started. I said for people to mess you up. They don't have to touch you. They just have to call your name. In covens and in shrines. And all of a sudden you'll hit wall after hitting a wall. Life is about names. You know, in the spirit, when they go, what is your name? They are looking for more than Mzwaki. They are saying, what is your access? What is your authority? What is your assignment? Because your assignment will forever be attached to your name. That's why if they take away your name, they have taken away your assignment. So when they begin to call your names in the shrines, they are calling so that they can hijack your assignment. You all of a sudden feel like doors are closed. Why? Because they called your name. The devil is a liar. I'm about to say a prophetic word to somebody. And please receive it with everything that is in you. Wherever and whoever that has called your name wrongly. They shall answer in the name of the Lord of hosts. Let me say that again. Whoever has called your name wrong. They shall answer to the name of the Lord of hosts. Please be seated. I'm closing now. Right there, what we just did as you guys were receiving. Whoever, right now, what we just did, whoever had called your name wrongly, whether they were not even in the shrines, but as long as, even online as you post your picture, or you do a video, and somebody looks at it and calls your name wrong, they shall answer to the name of the Lord of hosts. Please be seated. One time on TikTok, I'm looking at this man of God is teaching as teaching, and I went to the comment section, and the person commented, and the comment was so evil. The person was not disagreeing with what the person is saying. The comment was directed to the person, and the person put a curse. Listen, yeah, yeah, on a comment section, those things they don't go unnoticed. Let me tell you something. When Hezekiel, you guys remember, right? Received a letter from the king of Syria. You guys remember? What did he do with the letter? He took it to the altar. Yes, you know your Bible. He took it to the altar. And the Bible says, and the Lord heard his prayer. He didn't pray. You are missing it, right? His enemy said to him, I want to kill all of you here. Here's the letter. And he gave him his letter. The letter, the enemy gave Ezekiel the letter. The letter said, you and your people surrender now. Otherwise, we are going to finish you, your animals, and your children. So when Ezekiel received that letter, he took that letter. That he had a warning to the altar. He put it like this. And the Bible says, and the Lord heard his prayer. And he released prophet Isaiah. And Isaiah came and said, That said the Lord. None of their arrows shall touch you and your people. I prophesy upon somebody here. Whether they wrote it down. Whether they said it out loud. None of their arrows shall touch you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I see it and I feel it. Please be seated. And just turn my mic here on the monitors a little bit loud. Please be seated. I'm closing now. Watch this revelation. David. He's facing Goliath. Brothers and sisters. Goliath now takes the battle from the natural to the supernatural. It was never David who started. You know, I know what I'm about to say. A lot of people will disagree. But David, you know, he was a young boy when he conquered Goliath. 
but he was not small. He was not a tiny man. That man was fit. What are you talking about? He killed a lion with his bare hands. You think it's small? You think a tiny hand like this can hold a lion? Oh, come on now. He killed a bear with his bare hands. He was young in age, but in stature he was not a small boy. Like a beginning like this. No. And the rock he threw, it was not like a small rock like this. It was a big rock. I took a small stone. Of course, when we say small stone, you know, we we'll measure it like that and say it was stone. It was small. And there are people up to date who practice that thing of, you'll see that some they put a stone like this and they will hit the mark. You'll see what if the person hit your head. Ah, even in heaven, your wake up will be delayed. You'll sleep here. When you wake up, they'll be shaking. you say, you are in heaven now. You wake up like this. Because, hey, you people are joking. So David was an anointed man. God had anointed him. God's hand was upon him. Now there is war in Israel. And the man is busy saying whatever he wants to say. The Bible says day and night for 40 days he cursed them. Huh? Meaning he did it 80 times. So Israel, when they went to sleep, the last thing they had was Goliath. When they woke up in the morning, the first thing they had was Goliath. And there are people under the influence of my voice. You have your own Goliath. Every time you go to sleep, there is something you think about. When you wake up, it's the first thing you think about. But your Goliath will come down today. Please be seated. Please be seated. And David came and said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine. Uncircumcised. He was not trying to maybe make fun of him. He was saying, who is this guy who is not covenanted? Who is this guy who is outside the covenant? We are children of the covenant. So he was saying, who is this guy who's not in the covenant but is defiling the armies of Jehovah? There is something about us that this one's here. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. They have to think twice before they say this to us. Please be seated. Please be seated. They told him, they said, this guy, you know what they said when they told him? They said, he's a champion. They said, he's a champion of the Philistines. They didn't say he's Goliath first. They said, he's a champion. David was not moved in hearing that the man is a champion. David said, who, what shall be given to, <laughs> David was clever, you know, David, David was not a sanctified mumu or a CC. He says, okay, he's a champion, but here's what I want to know. What shall be given to a man who will mambaraskat this guy? They said the king, number one, will give his daughter to the man who's going to bring this guy down. Number two, his family's death will be cancelled even generation, even in, 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 for generations to come. He said, huh? And the king is going to make sure that this man, he is a leader of his army. This man is going to have millions. He said, huh? No problem. At least, don't fight the battles that have no reward, you people. You are there on Facebook. Nye, 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 nye. Don't fight battles that have no reward. There are certain things when they happen, you just overlook them like this. And you move forward. The greatest wisdom in life is to know which battles to fight and which battles not to fight. Once you know that, you are operating in wisdom. Not everything that comes your way, not everyone that calls your name on social media, you should respond your aunt and your uncles can gather and talk to you. Not every time you should call them. What were you saying about me? No! Check first. What's the reward? Uh -uh. Hey. Hey. They told him, the king, we know the story. Gave him the armor. It didn't work. He came out. Here's where my message is. The guy Goliath looks at David. 
He said, am I a dog? Am I a puppy? Of course, there is contemporary vision that says that, am I a puppy? <laughs> that you come to me with sticks and stones. Goliath was offended. His opponent offended him. He said, am I a dog? He says, wait a minute. Because you came to me like this. I will cut off your head. I will give your body, your head to the gods. David, when he had gods, he knew that the battle was no longer natural. But the battle is now spiritual. And listen to what David says. Ah. He says, you come to me with spears and javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, we have a name that has been given to us. Please be seated. There is a name that God gave us. That even when your own name cannot open doors. But when you mention this name. There is a name brothers and sisters. Ah, he says I come. Please be seated. He says I come to you. He says I come to you. In the name of the Lord. And at the end we saw David took his, the sword of Goliath. He cut the head. He picked it up like this. Why? Because David used the name. He, oh my goodness, I wish you guys can hear what I'm saying here. The battle, it was no longer about these two people. It was about spirits, entities now. And when two powers meet, less power bows. Our God is not a small God. Our God is not a small God. That's why they should be careful how they talk about you. Because if you are going to retaliate in the spirit, you might mess them up and their children's children. You are so dangerous that you came with a warning sign. You came with a warning tag. Touch ye not my anointed. Asha, please help that lady there at the back. Kalabarosh. Kilabahanga. Periakova. Please be seated. Says, bless me. Says, what is your name? It comes down to names. The psalmist said something. Do you want to know what the psalmist said? Do you want to know what the psalmist said? The psalmist says, some trust in chariots. Some trust in horses. But we shall remember the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some trust in chariots. Some put their trust in horses. But you and I, we shall remember the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Please be seated. And that was David, brothers and sisters, in the book of Psalm 20. I believe it's verse 7 or something. I believe it's verse 7. Put it there so that I'm 100% sure. Meaning others will trust in their education. Others will trust in their degrees. Others will trust in their husbands. Others will trust in their wives. But we shall remember the name of the Lord. Why? Because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Not just him, but his name is a strong tower. There it is there. Is there some trust in what? Come on church, everybody read one, two, three. Uh-huh. But we. Our God. Ah. 
Hallelujah. Please be seated. Where your name does not work, you have a name. You see, this is a mystery, brothers and sisters. And please hear me. Jesus came, Kala Barosha, defeated the forces of evil. He went to the grave. He came out of the grave. He ascended to the Father. And the Bible says when he got to where the Father was, the Father did not give him a throne. The Father did not give him a crown. But the Bible says, and he gave him a name. Uh, there must be something about names. Put it there, Philippians 2, 9. Please be seated. Why didn't the father say, my son Jesus, please be seated. You have now proved to me that, oh, I can rely on you as a son. You are my son. You have defeated the devil. You did what prophets could not do. You did what judges could not do. Now here's the throne. No. The Bible says, Kura Bahaya. Ay, 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 ay. Read it. It's there. It's not me. It's there. I want you to read it. I want you to read it with your own voice. One, two, three. Uh huh. A name that is above every name. What that means is they are names and God considers names. But the one he gave Jesus is the name above all names. Did you hear that? He didn't say he gave him a name. No, above other names, meaning they are names, brothers and sisters. Please be seated. Life is about names. Life is about names. I will repeat that. Life is about names. The book of Isaiah 65 declares. Isaiah 65 declares. Isaiah 62 verse 2 also declares. That when we get to heaven. We will be given new names. They say, ah, I'm so okay. mm -mm. Here's your name. You missed it, right? That's how important names are. So if you did not receive your name, your spiritual name here, you were not called by your spiritual name. When you get there, they will say, put that thing there. Here's your name. That's why during that time, because a lot of people don't, they have a wrong concept of heaven. Seriously. I don't know who told them that in heaven, we'll be singing until, until, until. I mean like really now. Why, why are we singing until, until? Doesn't God have angels? He exists from eternity past, eternity, eternity future, even eternity present. God is a self-existing God. Come on now. So people think we'll be hallelujah. It goes down, the sun comes up. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Like seriously now? <laughs> Did you read your Bible? The Bible says we shall reign with Christ. <laughs> it says we shall rule with Christ. Christ will be here and we will be ruling with him. Read the book of Revelation. But with the names that will be given at that time, your name will give you access to things like this. You, will, uh, you won't be limited by the flesh because at that time you will have received a new body. Now, like I always tell you, that when the new heaven comes, Maliak Havsufa, while we are ruling with Christ, nations will be there. It's not like, you know, we'll be, uh -uh, there will be a, that's why even the Bible speaks about the new Jerusalem that will come down, right? It had 12 gates, and there were names on the 12 gates. There were foundations, and there were names on the foundation. So we'll know this is what, what, this is what, what. It's not like we'll be dead. I don't know how people see heaven, I don't know. We'll be conscious. Who we'll know that uh uh, this is Elder Temba, this one? Who we'll know this one is Arthur? In heaven, we will know. Praise the Lord, everybody. We will know this is Sister Sweetness. So in heaven, we'll be like, Sister Sweetness, we finally made it. Ah, we finally made it. Glory be to God. 
All I'm trying to say is we'll be conscious. You will know who this is your, <laughs> this is your friend. People think in heaven your memory will be wiped. You'll just be dangling around like what is happening right here. No. Hallelujah. What we are not going to remember is our pain and our suffering. Yes, that we are not going to remember. Are we together? But hear me in the Holy Ghost. Hear me where? In the Holy Ghost. So the name that will be given to us, the new name, according to the book of Isaiah 62, verse 2, and Isaiah 65, watch this. That name will give us access to things like, I'll be thinking of Ethiopia, and I'll appear in Ethiopia. That time, I'll be thinking steak and potato. It will appear. You see, the creative power that God has, that's the one you're going to fully possess. And the veil of the flesh will not be stopping you anymore because you won't, you won't be in the flesh anymore. You see, God does not have to uh, take a flight and be in Angola. Angels, they don't have to take flights to be in Angola. They can be here. One angel can be here. And the same angel can disappear and appear in Angola. So you see that they are not omnipresent, but they can be in different places, like they can be here and then disappear and be here. We'll also be like that. That's why you'll hear Jesus saying, they shall be like angels in heaven where they shall not marry. Angels in heaven. So we are likened to angels, not because we are angels, but because the form that we will take on will allow us to move in a supernatural way. But before that, you'll be given a name. Glory be to God. Luke 10, verse 24. Notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you. My God. But rather rejoice uh -huh. because your names are written in heaven. Because your names. Not in the book of life. This scripture here, there is a huge difference between the book of life and heaven. I know believers think this I into it. No. In heaven, brothers and sisters, names are written. Hallelujah. Whenever God wants to work on you, he works on your name. If God is going to start something great in you, he will alter your name. Abram come out. He came out. And God had promised him so many things. But before those things manifested, God said from today, you are no longer Abram. You are Abraham. Abraham means exalted father. But Abraham means father of nations. And the prophecy was, you will be a father of nations. But the name Abraham was limiting that prophecy from coming to pass. Then God had to capacitate him by changing his name. Thou art Christ, the son of the living God. Wait a minute. From today, Simon Bajona, you are no longer Simon. You are Peter. Upon the rock, I'll build my church. Gates of hell shall not prevail. Behold, I've given you keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth shall also be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall also be loosed in heaven. But who is binding and loosing? Peter, not Simon. Are you flowing here? I don't know why we are seeing Luke 10. Oh, it's out because we are now talking about Matthew. So, whatever you bind, who was Jesus talking to? He was talking to Peter, who was always inside Simon. But when now Peter came out, Peter came out with a new identity, with new authority, that whatever he binds on earth shall also be bound. Ah, ah. This is the same guy, but his name gives him access to those things. Some of you, even when you are sleeping, in your dreams, somebody will be calling you by another name. You wake up, you bind. Eh, hey, that's not my name. Ah, yeah, yeah. I bind. You say, I saw an angel calling me with this name. That is not my name. That angel is from the devil. I bind it. No. Whenever you have such experiences or such revelations, you need to be spiritual. That's why some of you, you are sleeping. You are never called by your name. And that is because whenever you sleep and dream, you have fathomed the realm of what? Of dreams. You are in a spiritual world now. There they don't know you as Nyamsor. <laughs> the 
The whole entire Bible is about spiritual names. It's about names. Pay attention now. I'm closing. The whole Bible. I'm closing now. The whole Bible is about names. <laughs> the same Bible you read is about names. You think when you read the book of this, the book of this, the book of this, it was actually their names. No. They had names, but all those names were changed to, your, to their spiritual names. I'm telling you now. That's why they all sound the same at the end. And that is because each and every prophet, whether minor or major, carried the name of God. Say, what are you saying? Apostle? What are you saying Apostle? We all know that Ah is the name of God, right? Jehovah. Ah means the name of God, right? We know that El is also the name of God, right? Elohim. When you read the Bible in the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, its original text says, in the beginning, Elohim. It does say God, it says Elohim. When it says, let us create man, it says, and Elohim said. So the actual translation does not say God, it says Elohim. Are we together? So we know El is the name of God. That's why we have angels with the E-L at the end, right? Come on now, church. So I'm passing by so that those that are coming for the first time will hear me. So we have angels like Mike, Gabri, and of course, with the apocrypha, the lost books, we had Rafa, yeah. Sagwa, yeah. Sarafi, El. So all these angels, they have E-L because that's the name of who? God. But it doesn't end on angels. In the Bible, we have prophets, minor prophets, whose, who, whose names ended with E-L. Example, Jew. So the E-L, I want, you to sh I want to show you that your Bible on its own is a very prophetic book. And it's based on names. So we have Jew, L. Right? And we have Dani. Yeah. We have Ezekiel. Yeah. Aha, uh -huh. now you guys are getting it. Then we have the names of God that now has Ah. And you start with me. Uh -huh. Jeremiah. Yeah. Isaiah. Yeah. You are a good church. So when you study that, uh -huh, you are a good church, like seriously, because you guys know your Bible. When you study, you then realize that all these prophets, right? It doesn't matter. Even uh, 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 Zephanie, ah, all of them, they had the name of God in them. That's why you have our brothers in Jamaica. They believe in ah, ja. <laughs> and they say, no, the name of God is ja, ah. So even the Bible on its own, the books you read, those names there are not there by mistake. It had to boil down to names. You have a man called Elijah. Elisha. It is not a coincidence. When you read that there was a man called Elkanah. Like El. El. Prophetic. Very prophetic. Even Samuel. El. It was a prophetic name. You. They call you stone. You don't know why. I'm telling you. They call you Mbogoto, but you don't know why. Could it be your life on its own is not giving life anyway? You are a stone. So, uh, me, I'm a stone on top of stones. No problem. You need a prophetic name. And you have it, some of you. Some of you, your names right now are very prophetic. Why am I teaching on names? It's because without a name, there is no blessing. And yes, you might not know. You don't have to kill yourself to know your spiritual name. If God does not reveal it to you, does not, you will end up in error. But we have a name. That even though you might not know your spiritual name, that name can get you where you are supposed to go. And that name is a name that is above every name. You see, listen to me. Uh, we don't use this name, hear me very well, right? To get physical things. This name is so powerful that limiting it to physical things, you have undermined the power that the name carries. You can speak here and three generations from now can hear you if you can call on that name. Speak and you mention that name. That's what the Bible says, for that a dimension. When the name is mentioned, knees they bow. Whether in heaven or on earth. You know what the Bible says? It says under the earth. 
When that name is mentioned, glory be to God. God, this month of reign of blessings, he's rearranging things in your life. Your name is being disconnected to things that have nothing to do with the will of God for your life. But your name now is being connected to that which God has said about your life, even in this month. I don't know, the Lord spoke to me as I drove in. And he said, tell them that even though it's a month of rain of blessings, they shall be impact in their lives. So this month will not just be your month of rain of blessings, but this will be your month of impact. So, because when the blessing of God hits you, uh, I don't blame the church, I blame the keyboardist here. Hear me very well Holy, in the Holy Ghost. When the blessing begins to manifest, hear me. I've seen it in my own life. When the blessings of God begin to manifest, you have no choice but to walk in impact. You will cause an impact. In your children's life, you shall... Oh. Even at your workplace, even in your career, even in your gifting, there shall be impact. Because impact is not noise. It's not noise. You see coins, they make noise. But not impact. Impact is not noise. There are those who are famous, but are not great. And that is because when God said to Abraham, I will make your name great. God knew what he was talking about. When we talk about greatness, we're not talking about you being famous, being known on social media. Most of them are known but are broke. How does it help you to be known that you are broke? And it's an error actually to be known and have a certain level of influence and be broke. It means you are missing something. Because to even be known, it takes something. In our days, we have people clowning around. And they are millionaires by clowning around. We have people who lift things, heavy things, day in, day out. But they are not even making close to somebody clowning online. There is an error that needs to be corrected. I wish you could hear me in the Holy Ghost. We are not comparing. Listen, we are not comparing our lives to those people who are clowning. But I know what the scripture says. It says the wealth of the wicked will be taken from them and will be given to you. But we don't see that. We see the wealth of the wicked being given to the wicked. But that is about to change in the name of Jesus. In a position where you are praying and you can't sow, when you call this name, it will do more damage than any kind of sowing will do. When you are praying and you can't fast, when you call upon this name, it will do more damage than any fasting. Uh, you are not hearing me here. Let me come back to my people. You here. You are my people. I, I thought they were here, but let me talk to you here. It does not matter what trouble you get into when you call upon this name. Listen, it doesn't matter. Even right now, if you call upon the name right now, there is a shift in the spirit. You can't call it and nothing happens. Uh -uh. Even the sons of Sceva, who are not in church like you, they called it and demons manifested. And they said, Paul we know. Jesus we know. But who are you? It was when they could not answer who they were that the demon possessed men overpowered them. But they, were, they, were, they manifested why? Not because of the sons of Sceva. But because of the name. Even right now, when you call that name, he himself even if he's busy attending to somebody's prayer, when you call that name, the Bible says, and butter me as Holy Spirit, help me. I have to close this thing. I feel the anointing. And butter me as. The Bible says, and he called, and he said, Jesus, thou son of David, please, my sound engineer, when I called the name Jesus, I want somebody walking by Cosmo City Mall to hear the name Jesus. 
there is power in the name listen brothers there is healing in his name there is deliverance in his name Bartimaeus has called do you know that the Bible says we can be saved by any other name Buddha can't save you there is only one name Confucius can't save you there is only one name Alexander the Great can't save you presidents can't save you pastors can't save you prophets can't save you God can use them but they can't save you there is only one name and Bartimaeus had a revelation and the Bible says he heard that Jesus was passing by who was passing? Jesus. he was a blind man pastor Bayanda he heard that who, who is passing Zacchaeus is passing who, who is passing he never called on their names but when he heard that the king of glory was passing by he understood that his miracle was around the corner the bible declares uh, that he cried out uh, and said jesus uh, thou son of david uh, have mercy on me and the bible says uh, those who had him uh, they said you are making noise hold your peace uh, the bible said he cried even more when they said keep quiet uh, he increased the volume and he said jesus When you have tried it all, Jesus. When you have tried it all and it never worked on you, and it never worked for you, there is a name, brothers and sisters, and that name is. Some talk about it, but never see its power thereof. Some sing about it, some preach about it, but those days are gone. These are the days to see the power of the name of Jesus. I made a vow years ago. I said I will not stand in front of people and talk about the name. Just, just talk and entertain people. I want to see the power of the name first in my life. There is nothing wrong when God calls you and you say give me a sign. Don't go if you are not sure. Let him give you a sign. Because in that sign, he himself, he won't hold back. He will show you a sign. People think God is just a God who just does things. No, he will give you a sign. And I'm talking to somebody right here. Yeah. Hence, you must never do God a favor without his permission. Yeah. Well, you say, I'm called, I'm preaching. Ah, uh ah, -uh. give me a sign. Because once you begin to call upon that name, there are certain forces that when they hear you call that name, they will come and test your foundation, number one. Number two, they will look at what you carry. And he said, Jesus. And hear what the Bible says. Mr. Miles, the Bible says, and Jesus stood still. The Bible says he was followed by a multitude. I believe there were people. You and I, will, we are, we are students, we are scholars, we and I. We are students of the scripture. About, uh, around about 5,000 people following Jesus. Don't you think there was a woman at the back saying, Jesus, please, my son. Don't you think so? Don't you think there was somebody said, Jesus, I've been sick, I've been poor, Jesus. Don't you think others, they just called him so that they can just bless him? They were calling. But the call of Bartimaeus, it was a call of expectations. And when he called, Jesus stood. He said, somebody is calling my name. When I was growing up, there was a song that we used to sing. And we used to say, hush, somebody is calling my name. Yeah. Glory be to God. And when Jesus saw that the man was blind, he commanded those hey, who were telling him to keep quiet. Yeah. You know, there are people who will tell you and give you wrong information so that you cannot prosper. 
There are people who will be in a certain business, and when you ask about it, they will tell you how bad that business is. Yet they are in that business. I don't know if you're hearing me. They will tell you how bad it is to be rich, yet they are rich. I said, you are making noise. Jesus said, the same ones who, call, who are shutting him down, let him, let, let, let him be picked up by them. The same people who are closing doors for you. That, that's what I'm trying to say to you. I hope you guys are getting it. The same people who are closing doors, refusing with information. Refusing with information. They will be the one to usher you to your place of greatness. They shall usher you to your place of greatness. That is so. Your place of answers. That is so. 